Hello, I'm Mr. Pleasant Books. For this book talk, we'll be discussing a book by Brandon Sanderson called The Rhythmatist. <laughs> it's I, I keep having trouble saying that word. But it's it seems like he, he wants to make it a series. So far, there's just one book uh, in, in it. Uh, I don't know if he plans on making a series. It seems like he is, because the way the book ended, it seems like there's supposed to be more. But so far, there's just the one, The Rhythmatist. It's a YA novel about... Uh, kind of a parallel earth where instead of the big continents and land masses like we have here everything's into islands like it's the united islands of america the european islands the south american islands it's everything split up like the there is this <clears throat> you know the states are still kind of the same like california nebraska old nebraska uh uh, uh, South Carolina, and you know, then they mix other names together because there's not 50 different islands or anything like that, and it's the California Archipelago instead of the the Mexico kind of little peninsula, and you know there is a Mexico as well, so it's 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 the but it's just islands instead of of continents, and it's also kind of steampunk like they have coins that have clocks in them, and this. This seems to come about because of what's holding that world together, the chalklings. Which are little beings that are made out of chalk that can attack and kill you. <laughs> I focus on the one character, Joel. He's, he's the main character, the protagonist. It has other side characters, of course, as always. And Baron Sanderson is an amazing writer, so I, I, would, I would say read this book. It is, again, like I said, a YA, so you're not going to find really anything too, too adult in it. Uh, there's fighting and things, but it's, it's more definitely a YA novel, uh, that coming-of-age story. But that's it for the non-spoilers. From here forward, I will be talking about the book itself and what I read in it. Uh, just letting you know. All right. Bye. All right, so, The Rhythmatist. I actually have this one in hardcover, or in cover, instead of just an audible book. It, it goes through, it has pictures. What, what they are is The Rhythmatist are people who went through a process in the, the church that allowed them to control chalk and it also they've developed ways of fighting the chalklings because they're all coming from a tower in Nebraska and there's a big war going on <clears throat> and so they have to and so it's usually they draw circles to protect themselves like like you'll see here circles to keep themselves safe lines to attack with and these are the chalklings the things they send themselves to fight the wild chalklings now the story is that something broke free from Nebraska and came all the way over to where Joel lives at one of the prestigious universities that teaches arithmetists. And Joel himself is not a arithmetist. He has he has no ability, no power that way. He's just he's just an ordinary human, a hum, a very poor human. But because his dad was a was big time into making different chalks, kind of became well known, and so he's able to get into this university himself. He he wants more than anything to be a arithmetist but it just it's not gonna happen that's he just doesn't have the power but he meets a girl who is pretty pretty bad at <laughs> rhythmatic uh, theory or, 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 or practical she can't really draw circles she can draw excellent chocolates but she can't draw circles can't draw lines of vigor none of that and so she gets sent to be tutored by the same man who's trying to find out what broke free from Nebraska and what's taking the, the child arithmetist. And together, they end up being the, uh, uh, the team, the team that saves the college by finding out who did it. And they have a last arithmetic battle to practice for everybody who's about to graduate. And, you know, Joel, he jumps into the ring and he draws the circles and just has her copy them. And she draws her own chocolates because she's way better at that than he is. <laughs> And it's, it's actually kind of exciting, that last one. I really did. I read that. I was reading that. That last battle between them and the rest of the school. And everyone going to get... And it was, it was really exciting. I, I did enjoy that. Brandon Sanderson has always been really good about, about writing exciting, interesting, interesting action scenes. I, and <clears throat> and it's, it's, it's the whole time. Like, he, he got, I don't know where he gets all these amazing ideas. He, but he has some amazing ideas. There's like this chocolate thing. This book, I, I, I don't think I would have ever looked at a chalkboard and thought, hey, maybe I can write a story about that. <laughs> but he did it, and he did it so well. It is just really well written, and it's, it's, 
it's exciting. It is. I and mean, when you read about, you, you can feel their emotion coming through it. You know, and it's kind of steampunk. So you know, everything is you know based upon springs. It's like their their trains. It's a spring that's wound, wound, and wound by rhythmists who draw big chocolates to wind the spring for them, and then it just shoots them like a bullet to where they need to go. Instead of having a steam power or a horsepower or anything like that. So and it it. <clears throat> and it also is kind of set back in the early 1900s, it seems. So it's interesting. So it'll be interesting to see if he does write more, if, you know, get into the future, just what the future is going to hold if chocolates are such a huge part of this. And, and then Nebraska, I hope we learn more about Nebraska. We get to actually see Nebraska because the wild chocolates in the tower, I and mean, there's, there's, it sounds like there's some pretty nasty things over there. Like, regular soldiers are in the fight as well, but it's really the rhythmists who are holding the line. Because uh, for every, like, for one rhythmist, you need, like, 20 soldiers to be able to do the same thing that one rhythmist can do. So they're pretty big and pretty important. Just even the world seemed interesting, though. Just the, in the inner island world. That, that I think, would be kind of neat. It'd be, that's it. I mean, the book is interesting. I don't know how the drawings, because they, they talk about the drawings, uh, you know, in, in the book, and they show you the pictures. So I don't know how that would work, it, work if you listen to Audible. Maybe they would just try to describe it. I think that would be kind of boring, though, on Audible. But the book, if you can get the book itself and read it, very interesting. Because you can go back and look. Because when they talk about the different types of defenses and attacks, you can actually, you know, go back and look at the pictures and see what it is that they're talking about. I'd still recommend it. It's a, it's a light read. Uh, nothing deep, nothing too fancy with it. It's a nice light read. At, uh, I think I read this entire book of, well, let's see here, of 370 pages. I read it in four hours. And I'll just, real quick, easy read for anyone out there who's just looking for something that they can, they can go through fast and still have an interesting and a fun time with it. Definitely recommend The Arithmetist by Brandon Sanderson. So that's it. That's my book talk. I hope you enjoyed it. Talk to you later, Mr. Pleasant Books.